lovely souls. Happy New Year and welcome back to The Empowered Empath. January 2020 is not only the beginning of a new year, it's also the beginning of a new decade. Fresh starts, new chapters, and course corrections. Now is the perfect time to tap into this collective energy and intentionally set yourself on the course for your greatest happiness and success. I always say life is like driving. You have to look where you want to go if you want to get there. So today I wanted to provide you four practical steps to help you set yourself up and get in alignment with your dreams and goals for the future. This is what I consider spirituality in practical application. Hi guys, my name is Sarah Fim. January 2020 is a powerful month for manifestation. Not only is it the beginning of a new year and a new decade, as I mentioned before, but we also are kicking off the year with a super powerful full moon eclipse on January 10th. We have the Lunar New Year, January 25th. And on top of all of that, 2020 is also a four year, numerologically speaking. This is literally all about setting up foundations for the future for years to come. It's about creating a solid and secure base that we can grow from, creating a foundation for ourselves. It also speaks to putting in the work. It's very practical energy, but it all, it states that when we put in the work, we will reap the fruits of our labor. We will get our rewards back. So the four years are all about putting in the practical work and putting in the foundations for things that are going to be in our lives for years to come. So to help you tap into this energy and get in alignment with your dreams and goals and really use this energy to your best advantage, I'm going to give you four steps to start your year out right. Step one, this is the most important step. I wasn't going to leave this for last. If you listen to no other step, listen to this one. This can completely transform your life. Step one is cut out the negative self-talk. Seriously, negative self-talk will sabotage you. It's so important that you commit to being nicer to yourself. Treat yourself like a friend. We can all be our own worst critic, and of course it's important to be self-aware and self-reflective, but there's a point where it becomes less constructive. If you find yourself being overly critical, being mean to yourself, cutting yourself down, telling yourself that you can't do things, this is where it becomes an issue and can absolutely self-sabotage you. Now, cutting out negative self-talk, it's fine to say that, but how do you actually do that in practical application? Trying to think less negative thoughts? Let me tell you, that doesn't work. (laughs) And it's really frustrating. So it's not about trying to think less negative thoughts, but rather start seeding your mind with positive thoughts. Your mind is truly like a garden, and if you can plant positive seeds, they will grow. You do have to water them though. So if you catch yourself thinking a negative thought, or if you're being very critical of yourself, or if you're telling yourself you can't do something, or you know, you're being very limiting in your beliefs about yourself or your thoughts about yourself, redirect that. Think consciously. Make yourself think something positive. What's something positive that you actually believe about yourself? What's something positive that you actually believe about maybe this project that you feel like you can't do or whatever it is that's getting you down? Look for the silver lining. Look for the positive aspects of that. And then literally consciously think that thought. You're going to have to seed these thoughts initially before they become a habit. Your negative thinking is a habit. And to break a habit, you need to form a new habit. You need to redirect your thoughts when you catch yourself thinking negative ones. And I would also encourage you to start an affirmation practice. This can be something really simple as when you get up in the morning and you go into the bathroom, you make yourself look yourself in the eye, in the mirror, and say something nice about yourself. And it has to be something genuine, something that you truly believe. It doesn't have to be something giant, major, I mean, it can be something small, like I really like my eye color. (laughs) You know, some days it may be more difficult to find that positive aspect um, to be grateful for. But if you start actually making this a practice, you will find that you're less troubled by those self-criticizing thoughts. And our thoughts 
our imagination, this is how we manifest. So if you're thinking all sorts of negative thoughts about yourself, you're really getting in the way of your own manifestation. So in that sense, it's, it's in everybody's benefit to really cultivate a self-loving relationship. And that starts in the thoughts, that starts in your mind. So if you take nothing else away from this, I hope that you will start practicing planting positive seeds and redirecting yourself when you find yourself being really mean to yourself. That was a lot of yourselves. Okay, moving on. <laughs> step two, this is gonna seem really obvious, but step two is about setting intentions for the year and for the decade. So ask yourself, what has to go and what do you want to grow in 2020? Then I recommend you sit down and literally make a list for each. Things that have to go, this may literally be people, conflicts, circumstances, situations, perspectives, maybe it's a job, whatever that may be for you. What is no longer serving you? What is no longer bringing you joy? What's no longer adding value to your life that you want to leave behind in 2020? Next, you want to make a list for things that you want to grow. And this part should be fun. This is where you get to dream. Dream big here, like literally the sky's the limit. What is it that you want to see in your life? Imagination is the first step for manifestation. So take some time, have fun, and engage with this process emotionally. Our emotional energy is the language of the universe, and it's how the universe hears us when we tell the universe, this is what I want, this is what I want to manifest. So as you make your list, get excited about this. Engage with it, like I say, emotionally. Let yourself feel that anticipation and that excitement that comes as you think about these dreams, as you think about what can bring you the greatest happiness. So this one, like I say, seems really obvious, but putting things on paper has a great power. So definitely one that I recommend. Step three is set goals. It may seem like that's really similar to setting your intentions, but setting goals is a little bit different in that setting goals is about how we are going to take right action to manifest our intentions and to stay in alignment with our intentions. That old saying that God helps those who help themselves is absolutely true. You can perceive God however you like, source, the universe, however that, the emanation, however that's comfortable for you, but it's still our responsibility to take right action. We have free will, so we may tell the universe, this is what I want, and the universe brings in opportunities for us, but we still have the choice to take advantage of that opportunity or not. That's our free will. So it's important that we are showing up for the opportunities when they become available to us, and setting goals can help make sure that we are positioned to do that successfully. The goals you set should be actionable, achievable, and meaningful for you. So for example, for me, one of my goals this year is to grow the Empowered Empath to 10,000 subscribers. This is also where I'll throw in a little reminder, if you're not yet subscribed, please do subscribe if my content resonates with you. Um, but that aside, I know what actions I have to take in order to manifest that goal. I need to create content, I need to upload content, I need to be present and engage with you fabulous folks. Uh, if I don't do any of those things, I can't very well expect that this Empowered Empath, that this channel is going to grow. So this gives me a set of actionable goals. If I want to hit 10,000 subscribers, I know the actions I need to be taking. As another example, let's say you're really unsatisfied with your job and you want to change either your position or your profession, whatever it may be. Some of the actionable steps that you can take may be research, see what's out there, see what's available, see what your interests are. What would you rather be doing? So exploring some of that may be one of the actionable steps you can take. You know, fixing up your resume, applying for some of these positions. You know the actionable steps that you need to take. And as you're setting goals, I highly recommend that you jot down one, pardon me, two to three actionable steps that go with that goal. So you know what the next step is. And as you complete those steps, chances are you're gonna find that the next step makes itself obvious. You know what the next step is and you're just able to move with that. You've set yourself in alignment with where you wanna go and now it's a matter of one step at a time. Step four is commit to one new daily spiritual practice, just one. <laughs> This can be something like a daily affirmation practice 
or something a little bit more ambitious like a daily meditative practice. Whatever you choose, your spiritual expression is about connecting with your inner world and it signals to your spirit that you're present and that you are wanting to show up more for yourself. This is all about the relationship that we have with ourselves. One practice often leads to another and another and so on. What I'm suggesting here is that you make time to commune with yourself. That's what spirituality is all about. So it's really important that this practice works for you and that it's fun. It should not feel like a chore. All right, some suggestions I have for you for practices that you can incorporate into your day. One, you can do an affirmation practice. This is literally what it sounds like. This is just stating affirmations once a day. I recommend putting a little note somewhere that you're going to be every morning, be it in your car, in the bathroom, somewhere you're going to see it, asking what are three things you like about yourself? What are three affirmations or what are your three affirmations for that day? Uh, the note is just a reminder. I know I would forget if I didn't have a note. You kind of just carry on with your day. It's about making it a habit. Once it's a habit, you might not need the note, but when you're getting started, definitely encourage you to try a little post-it note or whatever works for you. Similar to this, you can do a gratitude practice. Basically the same thing, except you're asking, what is it I'm grateful for today? And you list three things. Sometimes you may have to dig a little deeper, but this can really help focus you for the day and just get you in a bit of a better state of mind. Uh, another practice, of course, meditative practice. There are all sorts of awesome meditations on YouTube, and I will link to some of my favorites in the description below so you can have a look at those. I recommend everybody keep a journal. Journaling is another awesome practice, and this is one where you, know, you can write as much or as little as you want. You might make an entry, I'm feeling sad today, or I'm super excited today. It doesn't have to be a big long story. You write in your journal what you're feeling moved to write. This isn't about you know documenting your day necessarily, but rather what is it that you're feeling? What, are, what insights have you received? What is it you're thinking about? It really gets you in touch with your inner world in a neat way and can often bring up stuff that you didn't even re realize that you were thinking or feeling. So this is one of my favorites. I definitely encourage you to begin journaling. Okay, the last suggestion I have for you is Lunar Ritual. And this is a little bit more ambitious. Uh, it's not a daily practice though. This is a practice where you coincide your intention setting and releasing work with full moons and new moons. So this is one that I love. Um, I definitely connect very much with lunar energy, so it's very symbolic and meaningful for me. I'm not going to dig in too much to it in this video. If it's something that you want to learn more about, let me know in the comments below. I will provide a download for a lunar ritual template, so feel free to grab that and make any changes to it. Make it your own. Make that ritual work for you. All right, guys, those are my four steps to set yourself up for success in 2020 and beyond. I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Also, if my content resonates with you, please do subscribe before you go and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. Also, if you'd like to learn more about my practice, you can visit me at tarotbyseraphim.ca or tarotbyseraphim on Facebook. And I'm also going to link to the Empowered Empath Facebook group in the description below. So you can come on over and visit us there. Thank you so much for watching. Blessings to you, and we will catch you next time. Bye for now.